Let's learn how to make a custom splash screen in Unity. A splash screen is the screen that shows up right before your main menu screen that usually has your studio name. So that right when players want to pull up your game, they see a call out to your studio. So this is what the default looks like if you have not set up any customizations. This is what your players will see automatically with Unity. If you are on the personal plan, which is the free plan, then you are required to have the Made with Unity logo somewhere on your splash screen. However, if you have a paid plan, you are not required to have that logo. So I'm going to be walking you through how I made mine and how I implemented it. I'm releasing my second mobile game very soon, so I figured this would be a great easy tutorial to show you how you can implement your own splash screen. But before that, I want to mention that this feature is baked into the Unity engine, so there is no coding or anything like that required. So whatever scene you have set up as your index zero in your build settings, this will automatically show up right before that one. All right, so to create the graphic for my splash screen, I'm going to be using Canva. I use Canva so much for my workflow, it's ridiculous. I do have the paid version and it is very worth it, but for this, you definitely do not need to have the paid version. One thing with splash screens, depending on your game, you may need to support a large landscape view and a portrait view. Since I plan to launch to mobile and tablet, I'm going to want to have a 1920 by 1080 canvas. So the easiest way to do this is to search for the presentation template and work off of that. There are two main parts to the splash screen, at least the way that Unity has it set up. And that is the background and the logo. For the background, I'm just going to be using one of my brand colors. Canva has this pretty cool feature where you can build out a brand kit, which is very nice. Uh, I'm keeping it pretty simple for this tutorial just to show you how this works. But the next part is the logo. I use this font called Zing Rust Base very often for my YouTube thumbnails, so I thought it might be a good time to start incorporating this into other parts of my brand. And I'm just adding a little offset effect here just to make it a little bit more legible against that bright red background. Now all I need to do is separate these components out. This will make a little more sense once we go into Unity. So I'm going to duplicate the canvas and export just the background. And then I'm going to go back to the other canvas and enlarge the logo so it's a higher resolution and then export it. But I will check the transparent background box so that just the logo will be exported and not with the background. So now I should have two files, a file for the logo and a file for the background. Now let's go back to Unity. I'm first going to drag and drop my two files into the assets folder. And you can see how my mobile game is currently looking right now. But now we need to navigate to our player settings. So I'm going to go to File, then Build Settings, and you'll notice that I am currently on the Android platform. And then I'll click on Player Settings at the bottom of this window. In Player Settings, you'll want to click on the platform for which you are working, in my case, Android. And then navigate to the Splash Image section. Let's get started adding our assets in here. So I'm going to upload my logo to the logo section. You can have multiple logos, say like if you have your studio name, but then you also work with a publisher and need to put their logo on your game as well. You can do that here. I'll also be adding in the background image as well. You can also choose just to have a color and in hindsight, I probably didn't need to export a color background image, but it's still gonna know how to do that. The nice thing about this section is that you can do a little preview to see how it's going to look. The default option is to have your logo at the top and the Made with Unity logo below, but I think it looks a little clunky, so I'm going to change that to be sequential instead. And when I do this, you can see that the Unity logo now pops up and we are able to arrange it how we want. I'm going to put my logo first and then hit preview again, and I think that looks a lot nicer. Now I'm going to show you why we had to break it up into two components and how this feature works. So if I go and change the resolution from portrait to landscape and hit preview again, you can see that Unity adjusts the dimensions of everything accordingly. Now exploring the features just a little bit more, you can change the color of the Unity logo if you so choose. If you want the white logo, you can choose the light on dark option, but if you want the black logo, you can choose the dark on light option. Now I do like the white logo, but Unity is actually adding an overlay over this, which I'm not fond of. So I'm going to go in and change its opacity to zero. You can also play around with the different types of animations that are built in. You can choose between a dolly effect, which is the default, I believe. 
You can also choose between a static animation or customize the zoom of your logo and background. Play around with it and see what you like. Uh, but one other note I want to make is about platform. So whatever you make here in the platform that you're working in will populate to the other platforms by default. So it's not like you have to set it up for all platforms. You can just set it up for one and it will populate to the rest. You really can't customize it either. You can't upload one background for one platform and another for a different platform. But there are some minor differences in terms of settings, particularly for iOS. So just keep that in mind. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.